You know, this day is pretty important to me. I suppose Mom and Dad will miss having me around. I'll miss the old place, too. Yep, I'm leaving this town for a while. Maybe for good. Oh, I'll be back summers and vacations, but I don't know. It will never be the same. It's a nice spot, this hometown of mine. I'm glad I could grow up in a neighborhood like this. But I'll never know how Dad could afford it with his salary. There's our main street. Most of the traffic goes right through without stopping. I guess I'll feel like a stranger when I get back again. I wonder how many of our crowd will still be hanging around Joe's Grill. And there's my church. There's one place where I'll always belong. It took me a while to realize what that church stands for. And my room here. Mom said she'd leave it just this way so it'd be waiting for me whenever I could get home for a visit. For a while, it looked to me as though I'd be staying right around here for another couple of years. I didn't know how I could ever be getting ready like this to go away to college. I remember one night when that was sort of bothering me. I was sitting right over here at my desk. It was just about a week after I graduated from high school. My future looked sort of dark. Dad had never wanted to talk about college, and I knew that he just didn't have the money to send me. I didn't have a job either, but if I were going to go to college, I'd need to earn some big money quick. I knew some other guys who had gone to college without a bankroll and had worked their way through, and well, maybe that was the answer. But where to go? There were plenty of colleges and universities around, for some guys, it's simple. They have a college in their family. They've known all their lives that they'd go where their dad went. But my old man never went to college. What do I want to go to school for anyway? What are you going to be, they all asked me. What are you going into, Jim? What am I going to be? Businessman, lawyer, doctor, or what? Maybe I ought to work a year or two. Maybe I ought to take a crack at the Army. Maybe college is just a pipe dream. Still doing the homework, Jim? Oh, hello, Dad. I thought maybe you'd put away your school books for the summer. No, I'm not studying. I was just looking at some of the stuff I got from these colleges. You were, huh? Is it uh, pretty interesting? Well, it would be if I knew. Dad, do you think I should go away to college? Well, I, uh, I guess it would be fine if, uh, well, you know, if we could find a way to work it. Well, we'll have a talk about it someday. Yeah, okay. I'd sort of like to make some plans. Well, what do you think? I don't know. I guess I'd like to go. I guess a person can't get too much education. Well, what were you thinking about? I mean, what are you planning to be? When I grow up, you mean? <laughs> if I only knew, then I could decide something. But, Dad, suppose I was going away to college. Suppose we had the money and everything. Where would be a good place to go? Well, that, that would depend. I, I really don't know much about these colleges, Jim. Well... Perhaps it isn't important. I suppose I could be educated at any one of them. They all teach just about the same thing. But it seems pretty important, though, to choose the right one. Well, we'll have to have a talk about it sometime. Sure. Sure, Dad. Thanks. Maybe your mother has some ideas about it.
Why, Jim, hello. Uh, could I see you for a moment, Pastor, or maybe you're busy just now? Well, there is someone with me, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind if you'd come in. Oh, no, it isn't that important. I'll come back some other time. I think it is important, and I think you came at just the right time. Come in. Dad, what in the world are you doing here? Oh, I, uh, I was just having a little talk with Pastor Michelson. Uh, I'll come back some other time, Pastor. You'll do nothing of the kind. You'll sit down right there. We were just talking about you. Me? Yes, we were trying to find a college for you, Jim. Well, you see, I, I was just asking the pastor here about this college. Thing. You asked me, and there wasn't anything I could tell you. Well, I... But, Dad, I... I didn't think we could afford college. I'm not sure we can, Jim. I was talking to the pastor about that. As I see it, Jim, you and your father have two problems. I have 102 problems. Sure, we all have. Life wouldn't be worth living without problems. But let's take them one at a time. You really want to go to college, don't you, Jim? I think so. Yes, I want to go to college, but I don't see... And you want, want your boy to have a college education, don't you? Yes. Yes, I want my boy to go to college, but... Uh, but there are problems. All right. What are they? Money. And where to go. Where are your friends going to college, Jim? Oh, here and there. Most of them seem to have a college in their family. So do you, Jim. Huh? Have you ever heard of Concordia? Luther? St. Olaf? Pacific Lutheran? Augustana? No. These are your colleges, Jim. And yours, Mr. Olson. They belong to you and all of us in this big church family of ours. You help support them every Sunday in your offering. There are almost 3,000 churches in the Evangelical Lutheran Church. Together they operate five senior colleges, several junior colleges, a couple of academies, and two seminaries. But uh, these are religious schools, aren't they? They're Christian, so are you. Yeah, but I'm not planning on being a preacher. What are you planning to be, Jim? I don't know. I wish I did. That's one of my problems. That's not such a big problem. Only about half the college freshmen know what they want to be when they enter college, and three-fourths of them change their minds before they graduate. I know what you want, Jim. You do? You want a good education. You want to train that mind of yours to think big thoughts. Maybe you'll go into some field of science, maybe music, maybe art. Well, I have thought a little bit of journalism. And music. Sure. And what about teaching, or business, or law, or preaching, even? Education is more than book learning, you know. Certainly it's for the mind, but it's for the soul, too. Don't forget that. You're more than a mental machine. You're a character that's maturing every day. Yours is a Christian personality. He's right, Jim. But these... Religious schools, are they the only ones that can educate me like that? No, of course not. There are some 1,800 colleges and universities in America. There are about 1,000 of these that are church-related. Sometimes the relationship gets pretty thin. But before you go scouting around to see what your neighbor owns, you look in your own yard to see what you yourself own. Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. St. Olaf in Northfield, Minnesota. Augustana in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Luther and Waldorf in Iowa. Pacific Lutheran in Parkland, Washington. And Clifton in Texas. Well, how about taking a look right now? I have a film I ordered for the Guild program tomorrow. Want to see it? Oh, I'd like to. Sure. Can I help you set it up? It's all set. Just fill out that stand in the corner, will you? Would you get that screen over there, please, Mr. Olson? Just put it here at the end of the table. That's right. I'm glad you came in today. I should have talked to Jim about this long ago. You have so many to look after. With me, it's only Jim. But I still wonder about the money, Pastor. Let's look at the first.
set with the film. Fine. Go ahead, Jim. This film is for young people who are thinking about a college education, whether they're from a public high school or from one like our Augustana Academy in Canton, South Dakota. That's its president, Reverend Samuel Carlson. Now for some typical scenes from some of our church colleges. Going. Who knows? They're freshmen. They have four years ahead of them. Those years will be more wonderful than they can possibly know. But they're on their way. Four years later, what has happened to them in these four years? Have their minds been trained? Can they think bigger thoughts? Are they more mature? Has anything happened to them spiritually? Are they ready for what life demands? Glory to God alone. Those graduates are beginning to understand what that really means. It would be interesting to follow them out into life, but this film shows us instead those who come to our campuses for the first time, the new students. Most of these new students will live on campus in dormitories, like this men's dormitory at Concordia. Some are temporary facilities, but it's comfortable apartments for married students. Here is Thorson Hall, men's dormitory at St. Olaf. Let's go down to one of the students' rooms. Our colleges house hundreds of students in these modern facilities. There are also small cottages in use, as well as many private homes near the school. The men's hall at Augustana, Larson Hall at Luther, the administration building, Pacific Lutheran College. This is Fjellstead Hall at Concordia. This is Augustana's new ladies' hall, a beauty to behold. Grant Hall at Luther, noted for its picture window. At St. Olaf, there's spacious Agnes Melby Hall, and the very new Gertrude Hillebo dormitory. Now let's look at some of the conveniences found in the men's and women's dormitories. Telephone calls and messages are relayed by the operator on the buzzer board to the room and person designed. Each dormitory has a spacious lounge Students gather in little groups to have devotions before retiring. Students register for the courses that will help shape their future. Personal help is given to each applicant. Counseling at students' request is always gladly given. Yes, it costs money to get an education. A fee statement is used for major charges. Well, I thought it would be a lot worse than that. How long does it cover? That covers one semester, half a school year. Of course, there are books to buy, too. and needs for spending money. New students hear lectures and orientation to prepare them for what's ahead. Here we have the Corin Library at Luther. They learn to use the library facilities. Like these at St. Olaf. The 
Pacific Lutheran Library is an important part of the campus. Our colleges have some 300,000 volumes to reference. One of the most modern music, speech, and drama buildings to be found anywhere is located at Pacific Lutheran College. In this building is located the auditorium. Chapel is held here. What does that say? A sound mind and a sound body. Main sana and corpore sana. Plans are made for training programs for the mind and the hundreds of modern classrooms, studios, and laboratories. In the administration building, like this one at St. Olaf, or the modernistic one at Luther, or this stately one at Augustana. This is the PLC Science Building. The courses of study run the gamut from, well, just look. Term papers, some good and some not so good. St. Olaf students going to chapel, temporarily in their gym. A beautiful new chapel is nearing completion. Not only these college presidents, in this case, Dr. Ilvesacher of Luther, but also practically every faculty member and many students speak at these daily chapel services. Daily worship is an important part of the Christian character of these colleges of yours. Our colleges really believe that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Is that the St. Olaf Chapel? No, this is the new chapel at Pacific Lutheran College. Hey, is that old church on one of the campuses? No, but it's about 10 miles from one of them. The students have operated the church for several years as their own project. This is Dr. Eastfold, president of Pacific Lutheran College. Dr. Granskow at St. Olaf in his office. Dr. Knudsen at Concordia. Dr. Stavig of Augustana. Pastor Rand of Waldo. Dr. Ilvesacher at Luther. This is the Student Union building at PLC. There are TV rooms, rooms for indoor sports, and space set aside for social events, all under student supervision. What's this? A girl with a blue. It's her first birthday away from home, and it's a little too much. Now what? All's well that ends The homecoming bonfire and pep fest. The big parade. There are plenty of winter sports. Some sports like this.
you see yourself on this team, Jim? Man, look at that guy go. And there is fancy fun. Cody is mighty proud of his new field house. PLC Jim can see 2,300. At Luther C.K. Troy's gymnasium, the focal point of athletics, and is an auditorium as well. And from this tower, radio programs are sent out from Luther College's own station, KWLC. And St. Olaf has a 5,000 watt station, WCAL. Programs by students, faculty, and our church body are sent out from here to four states. PLC is becoming very active in radio broadcasting. And many students are becoming very proficient in the intricate handling of different types of broadcasting. Say, isn't that the St. Olaf Choir? That's right. And with your voice, Jim, you might be in that someday. Or the Choir of the West of Pacific Lutheran. For the Waldorf Choir. Or at Concordia, you would sing under another Christian singer, Paul James. Or the Augie Choir at Augustana. Or play an instrument like this student at Concordia. It's in the Luther Band under Weston Noble, who also conducts the Nordic Cathedral Choir. Or the Augustana Band. The dramatic group at Augustana give you an idea of the interesting acting, realistic sense. If you like backstage production, this PLC is the light bridge gives unique light arrangement. Also, the wall rigging and catwalks suggest unlimited possibilities set creations and set movement. You mentioned journalism, Jim. At Luther, you would enjoy working on the college paper. The Manitou Messenger at St. Olaf. The Mirror at Augustana. The Concordian at Concordia. The Mooring Mass at PLC. At Luther, this student from Nigeria, Africa, was brought over for study by the students through their own fund. Didn't we see that before? It's a dorm, isn't it? That's right. Let's go up to one of the students' rooms and help us in our little problems here and make us better equipped to serve you in the bigger problems of the world tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on in. We're just finishing our devotions tonight. I don't want you to think that there are devotions like this in every room here. There aren't. But it's common practice for a lot of fellows, not just pre sin Phil here is going into medicine. Bob, you're heading for teaching, aren't you? That's right. And Ken, you're a music major. You ought to hear him sing. You know, I wouldn't trade this life at a Christian school for anything. I went two years to another campus where they didn't have this atmosphere. And it makes a lot of difference, not only in this way, but also in the friendly feeling of belonging we have. We get exposed to this, too, and we realize that the key to our lives is within its pages. 
It makes a difference, too, to know that your profs are Christians, and that no matter what subject they teach, they approach it in the light of God's law and God's plan with the gospel. I used to think that religion and education were two separate things, but I've learned here that a complete education involves my soul as well as my mind and body, and they're all pretty closely tied up in the person I am today and will be in the world tomorrow. take most of a thousand dollars on it, just for one year, I mean? Well, the actual costs are less, but when you add in spending money and clothes and transportation, perhaps a thousand dollars is near it. But I can work. I know guys that get jobs at college. That's right, Jim. But it's better if you avoid working, especially your first year. College is tougher than high school, you know. Well, I, uh, I think Mother and I could manage most of the first year, but after that, it might be a little difficult. Perhaps by that time, our church would be able to help. So this congregation, you mean? It's called LEAF, Lutheran Educational Aid Fund. We're working on it now. It's designed for the youth of our congregation, like Jim here, and the other young people that we'd like to see in our own church colleges. Well, how does it work? I have some booklets right here. Jim, would you hand me those behind you? Thank you. Please explain it. Briefly, it's this. We set up a committee to supervise some scholarships. Through our organizations, or from persons, or from our own budget, we get funds built up to help our young people get a Christian education. The committee decides who is most deserving on the basis of scholarship, aptitude, and need. Is the money a loan? It can be, but at first the scholarships are set up as outright gifts. Of course, the committee gets regular reports on the student's progress at school and makes sure the money is being well used. Then if there is money on hand for scholarships like this, the next step is to set up funds for grants or loans that can be repaid. How do they decide where the person goes? That's left up to the student himself. It's a new idea in scholarships that leaves the choice entirely to the individual. A LEAF scholarship will be honored at any of our five senior colleges, or junior colleges, or academies. If you could manage to pay Jim's way for the first year, or even his first semester at college, we may have a LEAF set up here in our congregation by then that can help him out. And of course, if he gets a job, that will help too. Well, it sounds simple, but I suppose it's pretty involved. It's all in there, and it's not too complicated. Don't you think it's worthwhile going after in our congregation? Mm, it should have been done a long time ago. But some of us are just waking up, Pastor. Well, that's the story. Here I am getting packed for college. For a while there, it seemed to me as though this day would never come. I figured that the Lord had something to do with my going to see the pastor that day. I'll miss the old neighborhood. Someday I hope to come back here. Then I hope to make use of my education, all of it. And I'll return to my church, or one like it someplace, and become a real part of it. I have an idea it was the church, after all, that found the college for me.